that's what you get. Hello, my lovely child of the internet, and it's I am all time one two six seven eight nine, and welcome back to another episode of Persona Five Strikers. Last time, well, we got everything set up to send the calling card for this episode. Off screen, I did a little bit of uh, money grinding, only a little bit because I did spend most of it. But with the money grinding, I was able to make some really cool personas. So I'm gonna show you right now. We got our boy Kapu Tengu. He's kind of okay right now. It's just that I wanted him for an actual, you know, HP skill for sh uh, shooting because we haven't got one, and our persona Arsen won't get one until way later. Also, I set up our send to be our sleep, our sleep buff, our sleep debuffer. So basically, anytime I use my HP still, I'm gonna get back. Uh, I'm gonna get back. Uh, I don't actually have Soul Thief on him. That's okay. But we basically have him for our sleep debuffer, who can literally just knock people out. So then we can get technicals, and then we can also try to do debuffs and stuff. That's what I'm going to roll him as for now, just to make him useful. Because he also needs to level up, because as you can see, his stats are kind of pitiful. But we need to level him up anyway, so it's whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, anything else? Yes, we did get a few more. Uh, we did get your boy, o o Oninushi Kui. Okuninushi, sorry. And he's our dude who's coming in here saying... I'm about to swing on you fools, and I'm about to land crits. That's literally his, this is his whole gang, his whole gig. He, we switch to him, do crits, then we're, then we're out. Then we out. Oh, did not mean to do that. Anyways. Uh, then we got your girl, Kiri, Kiriyushi Hine. Or, but basically, she's just here. She's our now best healing persona. This will always heal for max now because of the Divine Grace. So basically, we don't have to really worry about using this skill. And anytime we revive, they basically get full to like 75%. So, you know, all things considering, she's a good he healer and support demon that we're going to have for this next upcoming boss fight, so I'm excited for that. Um, and then we made our Nigo Shogun. Really good, actually. We're actually going to probably start off with him because he just gets Speedmaster. And being having Speedmaster means I just start off with more evasion. And then basically he's also just somebody who we use to set up uh, moves so we can just kind of keep going in. But yeah, that's basically all I did off screen. Uh, I did f fight a few of the... Uh, rare demons in the, in the jail, but it's nothing worth noting other than they were weak to thigh. Who would have thought? The dungeon about Haru, the demon was weak to that, but anyways. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and stop stalling and send that calling card. Uh, before we do that too, uh, we should probably show you the game we're rocking with. We're gonna have Anne, Haru, and Sophia. Are we gonna keep Sophia? No, we were gonna have Makoto. Yeah, there we go. Uh, who's, who's that? Mikado? Uh... Yeah, I mean... She's okay, but like... Honestly, I think Flash Bomb is actually better. Uh, that can stay down there, because I don't think I'm going to be using that skill on her. Uh, but yeah, without further ado now, let's go ahead and get jump right into sending the calling card. Now then. Yeah! Yeah, I'm ready at any time. Haru, I can take it. You, we can leave the calling card to you. Yes. Yes, I'll show Ma Mary's son how I feel personally. So you ought to rest and I'll get writing. Tomorrow's the big day. Let's give it our all, guys. Late that night. Good evening, Crow. Um, sorry um, sh to be on short notice, but could we meet up? I'd like to talk to you. If you don't, if you have the time, that would make me quite happy. I'll be waiting in front of the fountain. Well, I'm pretty sure we need to talk to you. Is it 
continue, so that's why. I'm sorry to call you out so late. I was worried about you. Thanks for being here. I wanted to talk to you about Mari-san. It's strange how I couldn't remember Mari-san until now. Even when Hasegawa-san said her name, it didn't quite occur to me who she was. But the moment she called me Haru-chan, suddenly, it felt like a lid popped open in my mind. And my memories came pouring out. I remembered all these things about my childhood. About Mari-san. How could I forget someone I loved so much? happens to the best of us. Sometimes we do forget the people who we meet along our way. But it's not forever, it's just until you meet them again. I think what happened with my father affected me more than I realized. All the times we spent together, and the moment he passed away, I must have suppressed those memories deep within my heart. At some point, I got used to hiding things away, and I even forgot a good friend like Mari-san. That must have been hard. Thanks for understanding. To be honest, I feel like I was running from the past again. <sighs> a long time ago, I remember tagging along with Mari-san and my father during a golfing trip. I was so happy running around that I ended up tripping and falling. And of course I started crying. Then all of a sudden, Mari-san came up to me and said, Stop crying and get back up. And that shocked me at first because I always thought of her as an extremely gentle person. But because I knew she was so kind, I managed to stop crying and eventually got back up. I remember thinking Mari-san would never say anything out of place. I trusted her completely. At that point, Mari-san hugged me and said, No matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again. Never forget that. <laughs> can you believe it? I didn't quite understand back then, but I think I do now. There's more to good character than kindness. Being good means dealing with the bad in front of you. It means to take a stand, even when all you want to do is run away. To realize nothing will change if you keep ignoring reality. Well, you're right, Haru. You're strong. <laughs> I have you and the Phantom Thieves to thank for that. It's too late to save my father. But it's not too late for Mari-san. This time, I can change things around. I want to tell her exactly what she told me all those years ago. Well, let's change her heart. Yes. Thanks for hearing me out. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my absolute best. But for now, good night. This late. You should rest up for tomorrow. Hey. Why is Haru so upset over Mariko Hyodo? I don't have a heart, so it's hard to understand. Why do people try so hard for others? I wonder if I'll ever know. I mean, you'll eventually get there. Okay. I'll believe you. It may seem like a simple concept to you, but to me, it makes my mind go... <laughs> but, I am humanity's companion. I am here to learn and grow. Mariko Hyodo, 
a false empress with a frozen heart. You are a cold manipulator who treats people as tools to be discarded. We find this unforgivable and will end your reign of abuse. In fact, we will take back the desires you stole this very night. This is... They say they're going to steal my desires? What a bullfish lie! Those desires are mine and mine alone! As long as I'm the monarch, I won't let anyone stop me! Very well. I was just beginning to work up an appetite. I wonder what you'll taste like. Perhaps I should gobble you up and find out! There. Take these wretched things down! Wait for us, Mari san. It'll all be over soon. Alright, let's do this. Mari-san's heart. Yep, here we go. Now that we're here, let's get going. Alright, Haru, go I'll let you take the lead. I think I see something over there. down here so I guess we can go up. And make our way over. Distorted for. What do you people want? You had best. Best not get in my way. Oh, I'm almost there. A few more votes and I'll win re election. This is wrong, Mari san. Those votes you gathered by twisting the people's hearts are worthless. And if you don't stop your tyranny, your staff will collapse one by one. I get why it's hard for you to trust people, but you still have to treat them with decency. Ah! You shut your impudent mouth! I've done nothing wrong! I will wring out every last ounce of corruption from my staff by working them into the ground! I'll silence all charlatans who betray me! And I will consume every last boat in the city! Whether these people agree with me or not, only then can I build a safe haven, a radiant snow city that sparkles like winter. <sighs> Are you living a happy life? Listen to him. When you take away someone's desire, you rob them of their agency, the ability to make their own decisions. 
So what good does it do to turn your loyal citizens into mindless drones? Isn't it better to let them arrive at their own conclusions? To follow their own hearts? How dare you lecture me! Good job, Muir. You tell her. Mari-san, say goodbye to the countless desires you stole. Because Beauty Thief and the Phantom Thieves are about to take them back! Honestly, they're all in my way! This is the last straw! You've made me so very hungry. Still have time, and the main course is Are you ready? 
There we go. Da, 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 da. This is the card of me. Game being like, yo, we're slowing down. Too much stuff is happening. <laughs> this game cannot handle what this this console cannot handle what this game is throwing at me. Ah! The game might actually just close because of how intense this is.
Shogun! Are set! Elidor! Are set! You're mine! Alright, Haru, let's finish this before the actual game decides to close. Alright, one more should do it. Get the one more! Oh no. Whatever, that's fine. Let's hit him with one of these. See, the moral of the story, don't be ugly on the outside or the inside. Oh, look! You got a new skill! Fire boost. Yes, please. Wait! Not yet! I won't let it end this way! I need to wipe out all of Sapporo's injustice! Please stop! Haven't you done enough? What? You're a kind person, Mari-san. And I know you've tried to shoulder all of this alone. The staff member who took bribes. The councilman who tried to set you up. Even the girl who died in the accident. <gasps> Each of these things grieved you. And in order to make a city where none of it could reoccur, you took action as you saw fit. Am I right? As the mayor, I know very well that little girl's death was ultimately my fault. But my staff betrayed me, all for their insatiable greed. I thought I could leave that awful position behind. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as that. Had I gone, I'd only be replaced by greedy scum. That's why I never stepped down. In this world, it's either eat or be eaten. And with circumstances so cruel, I decided I'd be the one doing the eating. Even if every last one of my votes were false, at least I could use them to make the world a better place. But if I was replaced as mayor, who would be there to honor that little girl's memory? An innocent girl lost her life, yet I could do nothing to stop the evil still afoot. It's not too late to set this right. First, you must tell the people everything that happened. Then can you get a fresh start. But this time, on your own strength. That would be... impossible. I cooperated with those awful men to hide the truth. That way I could continue being mayor. There's nothing I can do. <sighs> Stand up, Mariko Hyodo! <gasps> Are you just going to stay knocked down? You are a kind and strong woman, not someone who collapses over mistakes. So stand up and hold your head up high, because no matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again. Isn't that... Yes, you said that to me a long time ago. Even if you told the people the truth about the incident, there are those who would still see the good in you. Don't let your position ruin you. Think back to what you stood for. She's right, Mayor. You can't give up. If you tell everyone your side of things, they'll listen. When my father died, I felt like my heart was going to break. But thanks to the Phantom Thieves, I was able to stand strong and move forward. That's why I know you can, too. Remember the part of you that taught me to get back up, no matter how many times I fall. Yes. You're right. Thank you, Haruka. What I've done was wrong. I drove my employees to the brink and used a strange power to manipulate the votes. I was so driven by my personal agenda, I lost sight of how I originally felt and why I ran for mayor in the first place. To make a city beloved by everyone. To give back to the home where I was raised. That's reason enough to take another step. I won't make this mistake again. I never needed this power from the start. Haru-chan, you've grown so much. Your father must be so happy in heaven. Mar
Fairy Sun. Happy? <gasps> this place is collapsing. Let's go. That took us quite a while. Haru, you were fantastic. That was cool. I would like to see you do that again. It was only because you were all with me. But I do wonder if Mari-san will be okay. I'd say so. Her shadow disappeared like they always do. Yeah, your feelings definitely reached her. I'm sure her heart has changed for the better. Well, I guess this wraps up the mission. We still need to confirm that the citizens are all back to normal. It'd be nice if we could do that right away. Can we grab something to eat first? I'm hungry enough to pass out here. He has a point. Battles can't be fought on an empty stomach. The battle's already over, but still. Hey, can we try Genghis Khan? That delicious lamb barbecue dish? Ooh, that's a must in Hokkaido. What? I thought we were finally getting lobster hot pot. Since when did we decide that? Why would we when it's so damn hot out? But if you think about it, isn't Genghis Khan also sort of like hot pot? No way! Isn't it supposed to be barbecue? Well, cooking Genghis Khan does require a utensil called a Genghis Khan pot. And you can't barbecue in a pot. I think it's barbecue. Right? You cook it just like barbecue, so... Oh, wait, what were we talking about? <laughs> hey, was that a smile just now? I like seeing you happy. you might be weighed down by all that's happened. Indeed. She was so weighed down that she met up with our leader for a private midnight chat. Huh? Were you watching? You feel a strong bond between your friends. <laughs> Increase ammo count. Good. Alright, Sophia. Find us the best Genghis Khan in Sephora. Sophia? Uh, sorry. Okay, I've got it. Ten point arena. seems pretty normal to me. Their fanatical support for Mariko Hyodo appears to have died down. I'm glad they're back to their senses. What a drastic change. Just goes to show how powerful a monarch's influence can be. Hey, guess what? Hyodo-san's holding a press conference right now. Thank you all for taking your time to gather here today. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to share with everyone. As of today, I will be resigning from office. I do not intend to seek re-election either. During my time as mayor, I've betrayed all of your trust. You may think of me as a mayor who's earned your trust, but in truth, there's plenty that I'm ashamed of. The snow sculpture that collapsed was built by an unscrupulous company that bribed one of my staff. In spite of my responsibility, I neglected to see the finer details and went ahead with the construction. As a result, the sculpture ended up collapsing and a girl's precious life was lost. Furthermore, 
I elected to cover up the truth. All so I could save my position. I've been garnering votes I didn't deserve in order to stay on as mayor. I betrayed everyone to protect myself and covered it up by allowing more wrongdoing. I am among the guilty. That little girl, she died because of me. <sighs> as such, I will have the police reinvestigate the case and offer my full assistance. And again, I will drop out of the election and forfeit my position as me. Seems that Hyoro-san's made up her mind. I wonder if she'll be arrested. Good question. Oh, Yoda was afraid that if she wasn't the mayor, she couldn't protect her people. She could have told the truth and made her underling take the blame. But she was concerned about other evils potentially lurking in the shadows. I think this turned out for the best. Mari-san wouldn't have wanted to hide her mistake forever. Zenkichi is on the line. Hey, you guys see Hyoto's press conference? Uh, we did, yeah. Yep, you all did a bang-up job. Really, can't thank you enough. They plan on bringing Kyoto in as a key witness regarding the accident. I knew you'd want to analyze her phone, too. So I pulled a few strings, and now I'm her personal chauffeur. At least as far as the station. If you want, I can open up some time for you to talk to her. Just tell me where you want to be. Mari-san. Harucha. Listen, there was something wrong with me. It's like I was in a terrible dream. I don't know when it was that my heart grew so cold. But after what you told me, I remembered who I really was inside when I became mayor. I wanted to protect the city and everyone in it as if they were my own family. I remembered that feeling. Thanks to you, I've finally been able to confront myself. And I realized that I was doing a horrible disservice to that girl. I had lost sight of reality and begun acting self-righteous. Nothing I did was for her sake. But Mari-san, you were doing the best you could. No, it's the truth. Had I not realized my mistake, I would have likely continued to hurt even more people. But that's not what Kaho-chan would want. So let me say, thank you, Haruchan. Thank you for saving this city, for saving my family. Marisa! Your father's recent passing must have caused you so much turmoil. I'm sorry I added to it. But if there's anything I can do for you in the future, any way I can be there, just ask me. I say this because you're a precious part of my family, too. Thank you so much, Mari-san. Oh, Haru-chan! I'm happy for you, Haru. I suppose I must get going. Though I am concerned about the state of affairs I've left our city in, I'll leave it up to my successor. An arrogant wretch like me has no place being the mayor. Does that mean you won't be involved in politics anymore? Yes. I'm too ashamed to show my face in public. And at my age, there are plenty of younger folks who can... Mayor. I saw the news. So you're resigning. And you're leaving politics for good? That's right. I've promised to step down and never... You can't be serious! Resigning won't bring her back. In fact, it 
won't change a thing. Go home. Nothing can change what happened to my daughter. Hey, uh, shouldn't we get in there? Hold that thought a moment. So you can't. You can't just run away. You need to start over. Become a mayor again. What? When I was weeping with rage and grief, she stood there and cried with me. Instead of running away, you were there when I needed someone the most. I know your character more than anyone. Ma'am, thank you for sharing your heart with me. Then I promise to both you and your daughter, I will stand back up and become your mayor again. Larissa. Hmm. I don't get it. I know this is a sad moment. Everyone is crying. But it also feels warm and kind. How would you describe this? It's joy. I see. So that's why Haru helped Yodo to transform sadness into happiness, recording valuable data. Sophia has learned happiness. That must have been the mom of the girl who passed away. No, it seems like she really understood Hyoto's intentions. I'm so happy for you, Marisa. She reminded me of what Haru said in jail. Stand up, Mariko Hyoto! Like that? Uh, hey! That was a tender moment! There's no need to reenact it. Yeah, but you played it so cool back there. Ugh, it really touched my heart. I mean, you were more cute than cool. Could you please forget it already? Indeed, <laughs> truly <laughs> moved. You did good, Harry. That's... It really was touching. <laughs> What comes next? Uh, it doesn't seem like we'll be making much progress until the Kiki gets back. Uh, maybe we should do some sightseeing while we wait? At this hour, I would recommend the Ferris wheels over in the... Oh, nice. well, that sounds like a great idea. We should invite somebody to come along. Alright, well... Oh, I see. Hey, we got nothing to do with guys. What are you gonna do? I don't know if I were to with Tava. Uh, I know who I want to take. <sighs> Alright, mm -hmm. so it's the thing. Sorry, Morgana. No, I do not. <laughs> Where is she? There she is. Wait, what are these two doing? I actually want to know what these two are up to. Hey! Yo, I could use your yet. assistance. Be nice for us, but... What are you gonna do? Huh. Yo, okay, so I usually don't huh. like doing this because I like making sure I have saves for other scenarios. But right now, I'm very curious. So I know. I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna let you all down. I'm only gonna do Haru and then the boys, because the boys are always there. Boys Is something the, boys. the matter? What are you gonna do? No, I'm not gonna take you, but I just wanna see if you have any unique thoughts. Alright, let's talk to Haru. Good evening. Hmm? Yeah. Yes! Oh, a Ferris wheel? Of course I'd love to. Look at this view. It's somewhat strange riding a Ferris wheel in the middle of the city. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's kind of <laughs> that is kind of a weird thing. It's like not by a be like the ocean or anything. 
heart to heart. Um, thank you. Yeah, of course, no problem. Thank you for doing everything, including saving me from and Haru's son. It's so important to me, so I just have to thank you for what you did. No, it's thanks to you, Haru. <laughs> How sweet. You really haven't changed at all, have you? Say, did you know that the Ferris wheel's mostly comprised of red? Uh, I don't know that word, but it also has the single yellow one. Apparently, it's to, uh, if you manage to get one, they say that you'll be able to... Oh, okay, the gondolas with... Okay. Are we in that one? Huh? What color is the one that we got? <laughs> I think it was uh, the yellow. Really? Wait, really? Oh, it's not like I was hoping to say it was true or anything. Though... <laughs> I just meant you invited me to meet you here, so, um... We should try it again sometime. Mm -hmm. Huh? Really? Then it's a date. We'll be back someday. I'm so glad! <laughs> I'm already looking forward to it. We enjoyed the ni nice time together in the Ferris wheel. Soft romancing. Very cool. Uh, alright. I'll be back. I'll be back with the, uh, guys. The boys. Yo, dudes. Hey. I could use your assistance. What are you gonna do? Yeah, do you want? Yeah, let's let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. For real? There's a Ferris wheel. Where at? Yes. That sounds like fun. Lead the way. Yeah, the boys. Me and the boys on the Ferris wheel. Let's let's go. Dude. So, <laughs> we're, we're just a bunch of dudes riding a Ferris wheel together? Yeah. That's my line! <laughs> I certainly don't mind. It looks so beautiful outside at night. <laughs> this is a precious moment, guys. We don't get the bond like this all the time. What does that matter? I'm supposed to be soaking it up, this romantic <laughs> view, with a lady on. This Ferris wheel is unstable location for guide. Is an unsuitable location for guide time. I mean, there's no law about it, but it is a real blow to this guy's ego. Mm -hmm. Running a Ferris wheel can be a pain. Campaign a man. The heart sounds incredibly complex. <laughs> Dude, what? What you rather do this with somebody you're, you know, into? Well, Kawakami isn't in this game, so shut up. Not quite. Now it's not the time for such fervorous matters. We have, we just have a case to solve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know who I desire to to be with. Unlike a whining child like you, Ryuji. I wonder if I'll ever meet my soulmate. Well, whatever. You guys better tell me if you, any of y'all get a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I promise, you know? It's not like I have one already or anything. Although, I might... Maybe not, maybe not finding out right away isn't the worst thing. I mean, I'd be happy for you, but I'm kind of lonely, too, so... Oh, we're usually soft spot. I relate, bro. I relate. A, a heart of a man. Yeah, another mystery has been added to the list. Lady on, I wish you were here. We enjoy we enjoyed the view together. Yeah, me and the boys. And yes, that's what I'm going with, and no I'm not showing you the others. You can 
play the game for yourself. <laughs> got him, got him. Man, what a good game. <laughs> so I went to talk to Hyodo, but nothing new came out of it. All she explained is that she could control whoever added her as a friend on Emma. Uh, what about her phone? Not to worry. I have it with me. Here. Now that's what I want to see. After reviewing the facts, I've just about confirmed it. Each of these so-called incidents, I think they all stemmed from a mastermind. Oh? I'm curious as to why you think so. Yodo, Natsume, Alice... All three were changing people's hearts to do bad things. But deep down, none of them were truly evil. At the very least, they're not the same as the rulers who distorted reality for their own sakes and ended up spawning palaces. I'd been considering that as well. Before Natsume lost sight of his writing, he was diligently working toward his dreams. Alice, too. She was doing her very best to be a ray of light and hope for other people. Mari-san was also striving for the betterment of everyone in Sapporo. Right. They're different from criminal scum like Kamoshida and Madarame, who acted only for their own benefit. Okay. But how does a handful of not-so-evil monarchs prove there's a mastermind behind all this? The fact that jails are fundamentally different from palaces provides us a big clue. For starters, jails don't have any treasures for the taking. All we found are people's stolen desires. That means monarchs don't have twisted enough wills to reshape reality and form treasures. Which would mean that jails aren't created by the monarchs themselves. Someone else must be doing the creating. Our final clue is the locks on all those bird cages. In order to get to the monarch, we've always had to unlock a door that denies us passage. I had thought this was just a security measure designed to protect the monarch and the desires held within. But if that were the case, why would traumatic memories the monarch would rather erase be the key to unlocking it? Given that these are cognitive worlds, maybe it means monarchs think their trauma will protect them. I find that rather odd. If anything, I would think it's the other way around. Correct. What if it is the other way around? Why might a door like that exist? Make the monarch feel safe. No, it's nastier than that. What if that door isn't to keep intruders out, but to trap monarchs in? Oh. You mean they're trapped? That's actually worse, yeah. I thought yeah. the monarchs are the ones in charge. Think about it. What would happen if a monarch tried leaving their cage? They'd touch the door, and then hear the voices of their trauma? Exactly. They'll remember what made them so warped in the first place, and stick to their guns as a monarch. And thus, uh, I see. the cycle continues unbroken. The monarchs really are birds in a cage. Right, right. From that perspective, the shadows protecting the keys inside the trauma cell hold a far more sinister purpose. They aren't there to prevent the monarch's trauma from being discovered. They're wardens guarding an elaborate system to ensure the monarch's imprisonment. Because that makes sense now. Every time we touch it, we're like, oh, this is the trauma that unlocks them from their bad past. And if we defeat the people who uh, unlock them from the bad past, we can actually access them. But really, it was just so uh, any time that they were trying to leave to not be a monarch, they would face their trauma and then it would stay. It would shock them back to staying in, you know, their cell without being able to leave because they can't confront it. That is pretty evil. Yeah, that's pretty evil. Let me get this straight. You're basically saying these monarchs are being manipulated. And by virtue of that, there's somebody doing the manipulating. How's Hyodo-san's smartphone looking? Nothing wrong with her phone or the Emma installed. But I did find traces of surveillance. Huh. I'll bet it's the same snooper we keep running into. Though I'm lost as to who it might be. So this observer and our mastermind may just be one and the same. Hmm. Anyone have any guesses? Our first suspect is Medis, the company in charge of Emma. Since you can't get into jails without Emma, I can't write it off as mere coincidence. Medis, huh? Uh, too bad we can't just storm their headquarters. You mean the cops can't actually do that? Of course not. How could we even put out a warrant on them? By saying they 
go around turning people into monarchs? You have a call from Ichinose. Hi there! Sorry for the relative lapse in communication, but I did turn up some info that I thought you guys might like to know. So, I've been looking into Emma all this time, and I still have yet to find any differences between her past and present versions. I mean, this is state-of-the-art tech, not something just anybody could pry open and take a look inside. But then I took a peek at Emma's changelog, and that's where things got interesting. It seems Emma was transported to Okinawa at some point after I sold her to Matisse. Uh... Why there? Yes, exactly. Why was the first thing that popped into my head. So I dug around some more, and I found that off the coast of Okinawa, on the island of Kokojima, Matisse apparently has a research lab. Oddly enough, its existence is unknown to the public. When I called to ask for records, nothing came up. Basically, they're running a secret research lab. How crazy is that? So, if Emma's been altered in any way, I would think it had to have been done on that island. Well, guys, wasn't I a super stellar source of information? Yes. Yes, you saved us. Keep up. Yeah, keep it up, please. You just leave it to me. I've become rather fond of investigating, actually. Well, guess it's bye for now, Phantom Thieves. Please regale me with tales of your adventure another time. So what did Ichinose san say? I don't know why I didn't keep it on speaker, but here you go. Okinawa? Crystal clear waters? Shisa statues? Juicy pineapples? Shinsuko cookies? Uh, well, sugar cane. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Guys, can you snap out of it? If it's an unregistered facility, we could always say we're conducting a field survey. That way we could ensure their cooperation. We may even find proper evidence that could be used in court. It may be well worth going, but Kukujima is a bit far from the Okinawa mainland. Then I guess we'd have to go by plane. Wait, what about our precious Feathermobile? We've taken it all this way. That's what you're naming this thing? Plus, you said it'd be dangerous using public transportation. Even so, wouldn't it be too complicated to try to reach Okinawa by car? Oh, give me a sec. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah. Of course I'm aware, but I also have a job to do, you know? <laughs> Who's he talking to? Why would I lie? I'm being honest, I swear. <laughs> of course I remember. The thing is, I'm a little... Uh, well... Oh. You got hung up on. His wife is upset. That's not good. Uh, okay, guys. Plane to no-go. We're driving. Huh? You mean we're going all the way to Okinawa by car? Yep. <laughs> the thing is, I need to make a stop along the way. So we'll be heading to Kyoto first. Did you say Kyoto? Yep. Why Kyoto? I already know, but go ahead and explain for the audience. Yeah, I primarily work for the Kyoto Police Department. I thought I'd take a moment to catch up, share intel, you know, cop stuff. After that, we head to Kobe. We can take a direct ferry to Okinawa from there. That ought to cut down on time. But that's still quite a distance, even to Kyoto. Not to worry, I'll do the driving. You're tagging along? Wait, am I to believe that Nijima's been doing all the driving? Okumura, I thought you already had your license. I do have it. It's just, I don't have much experience behind the wheel. Plus, Haru's driving is not exactly... Uh... <laughs> well, in any case, we're taking off immediately. If we're leaving from here, you'll need to take the Hokuriku Expressway. The estimated travel time will be... About 21 hours, give or take. Gramps is correct. 21 hours? Are you nuts? <laughs> You forget I'm an officer of the law? We're badass at driving. What's with him all of a sudden? It's like a little fire under his ass. Fine by me. 
So long as I can visit Kyoto at last. There goes Inari, revealing his true colors. <laughs> hey, man. All right. All right. Pedal to the metal. All right, then. Let's hit the road. I'll get you rascals there in record time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a wild ride, but we're even closer to the truth. Let's head out as soon as we're all ready and make sure we don't leave anything undone. Well, I, yeah, I guess that's a good time for us to go ahead and stop for today. My lovely child of the internet. Oh man, a lot of good stuff this one. Ooh, this episode was good. But yeah, my lovely child of the internet. That's going to be it for this part of our episode hmm. of Persona 5 Strikers. And next time, I guess we're going to be taking a 21-hour road trip to go uh, see uh, Coach Kichizawa's wife, who seems to be up furious with him. But until then, I have been Multi12699. I'll catch you lovely cows next time. So, ciao, ciao. Until then. <laughs>